A few months ago, our house was broken into. No one was at home at the time when it happened, but it was surprising to find out nonetheless. The word about the breaking got around quickly as news articles covered the event. Most people were very supportive, of course, but a few people on the internet took the news as a chance to celebrate, rationalizing it as since I have wealth and having to replace some items in my home, it's just a minor inconvenience, really. For once, a reaction about me was made completely without my influence. Another irony is that nothing was stolen from the break-in, at least personally. Even my two most valuable items, my camera and computer, were left. Whatever they took was from my wife, unfortunately. I had previously been decluttering in my house, but now I finally shifted to a new gear. I got rid of anything I didn't want. Ton of items that I only kept because I didn't want anyone else to have them, or at least take them. Like awards, old items that had barely any sentimentality, things I had stored away never to actually be used. If any item lacked value or utility, I sold, donated, or just got rid of it. At the same time, I was reading about Diogenes, the ancient Greek philosopher, who only lived with one item in his possession, which was a wooden bowl. Even this he got rid of on the day when he saw a peasant boy drinking water by cupping his hands. He tossed the bowl away and said, fool that I am, to have been carrying this superfluous baggage all this time. There are many stories about Diogenes. Some seem too great to be true. But I'm glad to know he at least lived. You can find him on old paintings which depicts him living in a barrel, tub, or most commonly, a large urn. If you know about Diogenes, you most likely already know of his famous encounter with Alexander the Great. Alexander had heard about Diogenes' philosophy and was personally intrigued by him. So one day, he sought out Diogenes, who was relaxing on a field in the morning sun. Alexander asked Diogenes if there's any favor he could do for him, he would do it. Diogenes then replied, Yes, by moving away, since you're covering the sun. Alexander declared shortly after, If I wasn't Alexander, then I wish to be Diogenes. This is such a perfect example of two extremes meeting each other. I think the fact that Alexander, the world lord who had reached more status, wealth and power than anyone in his time could have ever dreamed of, still felt humbled by Diogenes, a man who had seemingly nothing. Coming to this conclusion, he must have realized that the things we value actually carries little satisfaction on its own. And all the things Alexander had that others wanted meant nothing to Diogenes. In my own experience, what little notoriety and wealth I have is still far greater than anything I could have dreamed of. But the experience itself feels like it can be compared to an itchy part of your body that is too far away to reach. You want to scratch it to see what it would feel like to get rid of it. The fantasy and the idea is always there of the pleasure and satisfaction it could give you. Until you finally manage to reach for it, the sensation fades quickly and you're left the same. Diogenes had nothing, Alexander had everything, but only one of them were truly free. What was Diogenes' philosophy that even Alexander the Great became so interested in it? Diogenes defined and was considered one of the founders of cynicism. This word doesn't have the same meaning then as today. Cynic meant dog or dog-like, which was likely said to ridicule Diogenes and his strange behaviors. He however took this name on himself because he actually praised the dog and its virtues, despite it being used as an insult. Diogenes didn't recognize society and by doing so he considered himself above it. He therefore didn't believe in shame and would do almost anything a dog would do in public. He would be seen shitting on the street. If people insulted him, he would respond by urinating on them. He would be seen masturbating in public. The list goes on. A dog lives at ease. They don't think about the past or the future. They live only according to nature, just like Diogenes. Despite his obscene actions, Diogenes was still a philosopher. But unlike many of his peers, he didn't recognize metaphysical ideas, since to him they are a waste of time and a distraction from the moment. Diogenes even had many famous encounters with one of my favorite philosophers, Plato. These stories are also really great. He would, for example, shoot himself during Plato's lectures just to distract the lesson. But my favorite story is during one of Plato's lectures, he was discussing the metaphysical ideal forms. Plato said that all things have a pure essence. Each thing has a form that defines their true being. Diogenes, who didn't like metaphysical ideas, challenged Plato and pointed towards a cup on a table. What about this cup, he said. Is there an eternal perfect cup somewhere? Plato responded, yes. In fact, a cup can take many different forms, but there is a perfect form of cupness that resides inside your head. 
Then he supposedly insulted Diogenes on his simple-minded take of his complex ideas. Diogenes then responded, What about the emptiness inside the cup? Is there a perfect form of emptiness that exists as well? Plato paused for a moment to think, but before he got to answer, Diogenes pointed to Plato's head and said, I think you'll find it's in here, where the emptiness resides. Finally, about Diogenes' death. There isn't much confirmed about this either. Some people say he got poisoned by eating raw meat. Others insist strongly that Diogenes died one day when he decided to hold his own breath. Diogenes' final wish wasn't for a proper burial, but rather to be thrown over the gates of the city to have the rodents and animals feast on his body, as a way for him to give back to the earth what he had taken from it. Diogenes throughout history has often been referred to as Socrates gone mad. Their minds were very different. What they both share is that neither of them wrote down their own ideas. They lived them instead. I don't think you'll see me living in a barrel anytime soon, but I think there's a lot to learn from Diogenes. I find it funny how I lost more items reading about him than actually getting robbed did.